I turned 51 during the pandemic and came to the full realization that I was entering the final third of my life, which I know is kind of a grim thing to say, but at the same time, there have been these incredible revelations about what the brain, the black box, is really capable of. And one of the biggest things that we've learned is that you can grow new brain cells at any age. For scientists, that changed everything. I wanted to create this workbook with the full recognition that despite how much damage you may have done or how much care you may not have taken yet of your brain, you could start to make a significant impact in creating a sharper brain. So here are a few of my favorite tips that I think you can try. Start doing it today. One of the things we realize is that we can make this really remarkable chemical in our bodies. It's called BDNF. You do not need to remember that. It's what allows those new brain cells to start to actually germinate and grow. Question is, how do you get it? You can't eat it, you can't infuse it, you can only make it. And the best way to do that is through movement. Now one thing I want to emphasize is that it is often said what is good for the heart is also good for the brain. And that is true. But when it comes to movement, instead of intense aerobic activity, they find that moderate activity tends to be a lot more beneficial. Why? Because you still make a lot of this miracle grow, BDNF, but you don't make so much stress hormone that kind of actually combats that BDNF. Both can be good, but one's better for the heart, the other better for the brain. This was something else that somewhat surprised me when thinking about nutrition in the brain. When it comes to sugar, there's something really important to remember. When you have a lot of sugar in your bloodstream, your body absorbs all those extra calories as fat. Your brain simply can't do that. So when you have a lot of sugar in the bloodstream, the brain receptors just sort of turn off. As a result, you could be overstuffing your body and starving your brain at the same time. We have this whole brain to use and we use various parts of it, but for the most part, we use about five to 10% of it, 90% of the time. The key to discovery is to start utilizing those other parts of the brain. If you do crossword puzzles, it's kind of like getting even better at knowing your small little town, your small little space. But if you really want to start to harness the power of the brain, you have to do things that are different, preferably things that are even outside your comfort zone a little bit, and things that require your hands, motor activity of some sort. I started painting with my left hand during the pandemic. Utilize your brain in different ways, and that's how you're gonna get the most bang for your buck in the long run. We all have a certain amount of stress in our lives. And for a lot of people, the goal is to extinguish the stress, to get rid of it. And what we realize when looking at the brain is that that's not a worthy or really beneficial goal. We need stress. That's what gets us out of bed in the morning, perform for exams, do our work, all that. But the key is to not have relentless stress. So if the stress goes up, you have to find the downtime during the day to let it come back down. It should look like this as opposed to just staying high. That seems to be what makes the brain healthiest.